Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel. Today I'm going to start a new series called Coding Concepts, where I explain concepts around programming. This first episode is about stack versus heap memory. So I'll start with stack memory. So each program is given a set amount of memory by the operating system. This is called stack memory. The default stack size depends on the operating system. So in Windows it's 1 megabyte, Mac it's 8 megabytes, Linux it's 10 megabytes. There are ways to change this, but this is the default size. So for example, we have this block of memory. So this is one kilobyte each, and one megabyte is basically eight million bits. So ones and zeros, so eight million ones and zeros. So here we have uh, 20 bytes, just to show you close up to make it more, to make it easier to understand. We can use a C++ example, because you can actually control memory in C++. So here we have int main and now, the few things I need to explain, the, so when you when you create a variable, it will just move the stack frame down. So the next time you create a variable, it will, it will be in the next slot, and the next slot, and the next slot. And there's also the return address, which is where the, the function starts in the stack. And they're basically just offsets. So when we create this, we have the return address, which will be at the start. And say we want to create a variable, so we'll have the stack pointer. The stack pointer will at first start in the exact same place as the return address. Um, so a few disclaimers first of all. This is a simplified version. Programs will probably put more things in the stack uh, that I'm putting here. There's also a thing called optimization. So when you optimize, um, sometimes it will completely ignore steps that you code and just simply, like say for example, you create two variables, add them together, and then put them in another variable. If they're compile time known, often the compiler will simply just add them together and put the the amount directly into the other variable won't actually create them at all. So this is ignoring optimizations. So here we create the n variable uh, and it would simply, because so an integer is four bytes in C++, so it takes up four bytes of memory and then we move the stack pointer down. So every time we create a new variable now it will be where the uh, the blue square is. Also, what's kind of weird about um, Windows and AMD and Intel is they use little endian binary format, which is kind of weird. So basically, it was right to left and then top to down. But anyway, so let's create another variable. So we create b equals 20. So this, again, just moves the stack pointer down. Uh, four bytes again, and now let's create a bool. So a bool is one byte. So we go one byte down. And now this is basically how it works. And then when we return, it simply just goes to the top and then returns in the first address. So a common misconception is that when you take something off the stack, um, it will be deleted. Uh, but it won't be deleted. It will be simply the reference to that won't be used anymore. And then you overwrite it when you create more data. So if you, for example, uh, stop using a variable, say a variable goes out of scope, and then you make another variable, the other variable will take its place if you need it. But it won't actually be deleted because it's very slow if you... Let's say, for example, you create 100 integers and then return from a function. You're not going to go and loop through and make everything zero. You just leave it as it is and just take, remove the references is all you do. And then you overwrite it as needed. So yeah, we go to the return address and then return zero in the, first, in the place where n used to be. All right, another example. So here we have another function. Uh, so, first of all, yeah, we go to the main function, we have the return address of the main, and we create a number, number equals 10. Then we go to another function, so we need to specify a bit more. So we have the main return address, and then we have the main stack offset, and then we have the add return address, which is actually the same as the main stack offset. Um, then we need to create the then we need to create the parameters. So the parameters also go on the stack, so we create the parameters. We put in five, 10 and 5 in the parameters, so A and B is 10 and 5. And then we go straight to returning, so it will put 15 directly in that, in the same slot as the return address. And then we, uh, as B has gone out of scope, it now is, well, the data's still there, but the reference is gone. And then we just simply need to put 15 into number, so we put 15 into number, and then we're back to where we are now. So now number is 15. And then we return and return zero. All right, now we have heap memories. So if programs want to get more memory, they can ask the operating system for more. 
This is called heat memory. Uh, the only limit to heat memory is the amount of memory left on the system or restrictions from the operating system. Now again, we have the stack. Let's say, for example, we want to do something like this. Um, so here we're going to create some heat memory um, using pointers and the keyword new in C++. So we do exactly the same thing. We have the return address uh, and the stack offset. And we uh, go straight to get array. The difference here is we didn't actually create any variables in main. Um, so it's actually going to look like it's not changing at all. So we go to get array and the uh, return address for get array and the return address for main are actually the same. So now we create 10 integers on the heap, which basically asks the OS, can we have some more memory, please? And we get, uh, so we have an integer is four bytes. So we need 40 bytes, 40 bytes of memory. So we have 40 bytes of memory from the operating system. And this is separate from the stack. And then we have a reference to the memory address of the first element which is called array. So array is a pointer to the first element in that array. And a pointer is 64 bits. So it's uh, eight bytes. So it takes up more space than an integer. And then we simply return it and it doesn't actually look like we're doing anything because the return address is actually the same as where we are. And then doesn't look like it changes at all. Let's set the values of the heap array using a for loop. So if first we go through and we create i uh, and then we are going to change it. So it starts at zero. So I'm adding I plus one. So it makes sense. So we set here, we set the heap memory to one in the first element. Then we add one to I, and then we make this two. Then we increase I to two, and then we make this three. Let's say we do all this all the way to 10. So uh, here we've gone out of scope of I, so I will be cleared off, but the data will still actually be there until overwritten. Um, and we've made everything 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The way it is here, though, we will have a memory leak. So if we go and do something else in the program and not return, we haven't cleared this data. So to clear it, we need to call delete. Um, otherwise, it will stay there. And while the program is open, this memory will be taken from the operating system. It's not much memory, but sometimes you can take a lot. So here we need to call delete. And what delete does is simply just does this. And then the reference is gone. We remove the reference. So you can't use the array pointer now because it's now deallocated memory. But the memory is still there. Until we return, then it will be overwritten. All right, let me show you some errors that can happen. So we have a stack overflow. 50,000 multiplied by 4 equals 1 million bytes. And we have 1 megabyte of stack memory. So this will basically fill it up entirely. But if we... If we create one more variable, it'll basically go out of the limit. So for example, we do this, we do 260,000. Now we've gone to 1,040,000 bytes, which is too much for Windows. So we'll get what's called a stack overflow, meaning we've used too much of the default memory. If you want to use more, you have to get heap memory. Next, we have what's called a memory leak. So here we're going to call function and we're going to just create an array of a thousand integers, which will be about four kilobytes. Uh, then we just return zero and completely ignore the array pointer. So now we have unreferenced heap memory, which basically means that it, it will never be freed until we close the program. So four kilobytes of data will be taken from the operating system while the program's open and you won't be able to use it, uh, which isn't much, but you could make it a lot more. You could make it, you know, megabytes or gigabytes. Uh, next we have, uh, so we're using std vector, which is basically just a dynamic list, uh, which which can grow in size and is heap allocated. So if you put it in a while loop, which is infinite, and then just simply push back, which increases the list by one each time, this will just eat all of the memory in your system until you run out or the program crashes. This is definitely something you want to avoid. All right, let's go through the different languages. This isn't a complete list. We have languages with manual memory management, C, C++, Assembly, Zig, Odin. Uh, so in these languages, you have full control and you choose when you have stack memory, when you have heap memory. And you have kind of partial memory management. These are languages that in general do it automatically, but you can choose if you want to have heap memory. But in general, it's not fully controlled and it's kind of done for you. And then you have completely controlled languages, which are called garbage collected languages, which is basically like the program will automatically heap allocate for you. 
and it will check to see if there's any memory that's not referenced on the SAC anymore and then delete it for you, which does have a performance hit. So if you're using a garbage collected language, so why would you need to know this? Well, in general, you if you want more performance, you try to use stack memory and not heap memory. So if there's something in your language that you understand that, oh, this will allocate on the heap, this won't allocate on the heap, and you want better performance, then pick this option. So it's it depends on what language you're using, uh, but you kind of need to understand how your your the programming language works in order to get more performance. So here's just a quick summary of the stack and the heap. So the stack is dedicated memory given to each program by the operating system. It's fast, it's close together, and therefore more likely to be stored in cache memory. It's also already given to you, so it's like a buffer. You're, you're given it, so you don't need to ask for more uh, unless you need more memory. Uh, it's automatically overwritten when it goes out of scope, and other functions use that memory. Uh, it's limited, the program will crash if you go out of bounds, known as stack overflow. And then heap, so extra memory that you need to ask the OS for. Uh, it's slow, it takes longer to access as it's further away from, like normally, say if you're accessing memory here, this will be in the cache. Sometimes you can go really far away in the heap memory, but it can depend. Sometimes it's close together, sometimes it's not. Uh, you also need to wait for the OS to give you the memory, which can take some time. It's permanent until deleted or the program ends. It's limited only by the amount of RAM on your system or other things like limits on by your operating system and leads to more bugs, so memory leaks, double free, things like this. So that was an in-depth summary of how the stack and the heap work. Let me know if you have any questions. See you guys next time.